Hey y'all, so <laughs> once again, walking back from the Plasma Center, not being able to donate for a third time, and I learned a lot of information. Let's talk about it. You know, it's early in the morning, it's nine o'clock, so I shouldn't poss I shouldn't have to deal with too much traffic as far as interference. But I did the liberty of a 30 minute recording. Now I couldn't darn go and give y'all video form because of obviously you have to have video consent inside of a government building such as the plasma center. So now I noticed they said video consent. They ain't said shit about audio. So I put y'all on the recorder instead. And now I got to figure out how to put that on YouTube. I guess I go to my power director and I just put up an image and have the audio in the background and y'all can listen through the audio. This is my first time in 10 years ever having to upload a half hour recording onto YouTube, but I think it's important for y'all to hear the conversation that I've had just in case somebody else is dealing with something like this where you naturally have a, a high heart rate and they're not giving you any darn one like they ain't telling you nothing but and but then again i finally got the answer to that they say since they are nurses they can't really give medical advice side note y'all look at this house Ooh, i am and then it qualifies for owner financing y'all child if all in my darn own shit in life was together I'll be thinking about darn gonna making it my damn house although the powerball shit although if I win the powerball fuck that I'm getting me a good old house if I get <laughs> cause the powerball at the taxes is what 500 some million dollars it's gonna well actually no cause it done jumped up to 1.5 billion cause nobody didn't win the 1.6 billion last night I don't think so yeah, but although it does take a couple days for some winners. I've seen that they first say that nobody didn't win and then somebody out of nowhere done came up with the winning ticket. Now, I don't know why the system doesn't automatically show if there's a winning ticket. But that's a whole nother video, y'all. <laughs> but hell, I need a damn lottery ticket or something. They ain't letting me damn donate, child. Here I am, can't even do a civic duty of darn going donating plasma. And then I got to mention a running joke. It seems like the unhealthiest people is able to damn donate. And that's why I even brought up my own health. It's like when I ate the Pringles and shit, y'all let me damn donate. Oh, see now, here comes the credit card companies want to call. See, I can't even get through a damn uh, a recording without the darn going bill collectors trying to call me. See what you're doing, CSL Plasma. Can't even let me down. Gonna pay my credit card down. This demon still ain't gone back to work, which means I can't even really work at the house. I'm going to try though. I got an interview today at 1:30 with um, Aspen Dental. And I done heard so many negative reviews in regards to Aspen Dental that it's like, ooh, do I even want to take that job on? However, once again, y'all know I like to go through the pain and shit so y'all don't have to. Let me talk about Aspen Dental real quick and then we'll circle back to CSL Plasma, but they tacky ass. So, Asper Dental, ironically, is the dentist that I've went to to get my darn on teeth somewhat presentable. Because y'all know, a couple years ago, I couldn't smile like this. Honey, I had a hole up here, a hole up there. My teeth was actually starting to turn a little bit yellowish. 
I know they look yellow right now, but they're really uh, shade A3 if y'all are familiar with teeth shades. I would love to have that movie star white smile, but y'all know I, I drunk a gallon of soda a day for, I broke it down and how much soda I drunk in my lifetime could have actually filled up a pool. I had well over 5,000 gallons of soda in my lifetime, being conservative. Because I didn't even count the sodas that I've had at friends' houses and stuff like that. I'm just counting the Mountain Dew that I purchased by myself. I've consumed well over 5,000 gallons, so my enamel is shot. And the enamel, the more that you have, the more that you will be able to successfully bleach your teeth and get that naturally white smile. Yeah, I can't do that. I need veneers. And y'all know veneers are cosmetic, so my insurance is not going to cover no damn veneers. They're going to be like, bitch, you're going to have to come out of pocket just like everybody else. And then before y'all say, well, Diva, get on a plane, go to Columbia, go to Turkey. <laughs> Y'all know a bitch suffer from Crohn's disease. I can't darn gonna be going to another country and then something happens and they don't have medication for me. And then, you know, we have to address the obvious that I'm trans uh, and whatnot. And I don't know what countries be fucking with the darn on girls, honey. Now, of course, I would do my due diligence and research. But I intersect all for that. I'd rather just pay a little bit more money and deal with a doctor here in the US. Cause if shit goes haywire, I will be able to damn gonna sue. I know the laws of the United States. I'm not no international lawyer. I don't know if I could be able to sue for malpractice in Turkey or Colombia. And then I don't want my motherfucking mouth be looking like everybody else. It seems like everybody got the exact same teeth. Everybody looking like damn Mr. Potato Head. Everybody looking like damn Nene Lee. Ding. Uh uh. I don't want them no more than the whites of my eyes. Give me a natural B2 shade. I guess that would be a little bit more brighter than my eyes, but it ain't that newfound look that everybody else got. I just want a general white smile. And then I will have to replace, um, replace that porcelain crown. Because y'all know I had a whole tooth that got gone over here. And you can't tell because the crown mimics my teeth. So that cost me a good $800. So I will have to get a whole nother one to blend in with the veneers but I want the safe veneers I, I don't want the ones where they got to file you down like a piranha cause people don't know you got to update that shit every 10 years and what if it gets to a point where I might not be able to update and one of them fall off I'd rather my natural teeth still be presentable underneath versus having piranha teeth you know, underneath the darn going veneers. I want the ones where they can just thinly lay them over your tooth, your teeth, versus those thick, heavy ones that gives everybody that fake look. Ooh, let me turn the camera over this way because there is a daycare over there. And y'all know the darn on YouTube don't be playing about the children, honey. One child gets in the damn video, honey, video automatically demonetized, honey. And then speaking of demonetization, honey, shout out to all the new subscribers. Now, I hope y'all stay around for, because this is what I normally do is my vlogs and stuff about my daily life. Unlike some of the other, you know, folks that review Bobby, I love you, Per, they focus mostly on reality. Honey, I'm like Walmart. I give you a one-stop shop of everything. We talk about politics. Although, you know, I failed this time around on the midterms. 
because of life issues. We talk about life issues, obviously. Um, then, of course, my Diva Natural Wand channel. We talk about skincare aesthetics and all of that. And once I get back employed and get my life together, we'll be more consistent on that channel as well. And then bringing it back home to Aspen Dental. Like I said, I'm not liking the reviews about Aspen Dental. However, y'all like y'all know I like to do some investigating. I like to go undercover with y'all and give y'all all the inside tea that y'all won't find out on y'all own. Cause it's one thing to see the reviews, it's another thing to actually put the review to a face. I think a YouTube review of a job has way more impact than, you know, somebody just leaving a, a Google review because you don't know the person versus most of y'all have gotten to know me over some time. And then, of course, in video format, I'm able to be way more descriptive with my experiences with the job. I'm able to show y'all certain images and stuff that I would not be able to do with just a plain Google review. So I'm going to darn gone take the bullet and go through the stress of this darn gone job if they hire me. So far I done passed all the exams. I did a video interview no, first I had to do a questionnaire screening. Then I had to do a video interview. Then I had to do a phone interview. And now I had to get in with the hiring manager. Now I don't already told them. And I didn't tell them like this. I did it professionally. I said, what is the dress code? Do I have to dress up? Or can I be casual? She said, as long as you are in a iron you know a freshly ironed shirt or whatnot i should be good she said business casual i'm going to go straight casual because i ain't got time today now you know my casual is still going to be presentable i don't have no profanity no politics you know the standards matter of fact i need to do a video on that what to wear to a casual interview avoid politics avoid religion avoid uh, any sort of controversial imaging, you know, explicitness, avoid any of that with your attire. Also conversations as well. If they ask you for general background stuff, you know, keep it still professional. So, hell, I'm gonna keep this shirt on because I don't see nothing wrong with this. And if they and it's a t-shirt or whatnot, if they hire me, they hire me, they don't, they don't. I'll still be able to give y'all some, you know, a review on the hiring process since I made it all the way to the end. Now, if they do hire me, I'll be able to tell y'all about how the training is. Because the training, I think they said is like six weeks long. The hours are going to be from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. What else? Yep, 8 p.m. I mean 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Four to six weeks. And then I'm just dealing with um, screening new customers to get into the office. So I'm not going to be dealing with existing customers. I'm trying to make sure I don't get the person behind me in the background. But yeah, y'all, that's gonna be the Aspen Dental. That will be up. Ugh. That would be on my business channel, Diva Wands Business. But anyways, as far as the hundred some subscribers that I've gotten overnight from the Bobby, I love you purr. Like I said, hopefully y'all stick around for all my other videos or whatnot. I do appreciate everybody that done a subscribe. The ones that were already subscribed, definitely. You know, claps to y'all. 
we riding on down. I think we're only going to get a two-part reunion. I definitely know we get more than one part because, honey, they got a whole lot of shit to talk about. And then we heard that they was there from, what, 3 o'clock in the afternoon to 7 o'clock in the morning the next day. So they was filming for like 15 hours. Well, they was there doing pre-shoots and stuff. But they actually filmed the reunion 11 o'clock at night, I believe all the way to five in the morning. So they recorded for six hours. Now, now y'all know we basically gonna get half of that. So if they do our, our episodes, we might get a three part reunion. Hopefully they do three parts so we can get, although the way that they said that everything wasn't explained, I'm trying to figure out, well, how do y'all know that? How do y'all know that all the, like if y'all was filming for six hours, was y'all doing that much damn fighting where none of the questioners were able to get asked between 15 people? Well, 14 because TBD didn't show up. Although Cameron did say they darn gonna came out swinging. Cameron done ran up on cash, AKA go hard. And Lord knows, have y'all seen that situation with them, honey? Go Hard and Allen boys now in a relationship. Rail is still going at it with Darn on Go Hard. Go Hard just burnt Darn on Rail's clothes up last night that Rail Darn on Lynn to Go Hard. We found out that the boys get paid so little that when Hot Wheels got eliminated, when Hot Wheels got eliminated, he had to ask Darn on Rail for some cash to help get his Darn on uh, bags home. Ain't that about a bitch, y'all? So y'all doing all this ratchetness on the show, and y'all don't even got enough money to get y'all own asses home. Now, one might argue and say, well, technically they might hold the pay until the episode airs. But I would think you are negotiating your contract that upon elimination, they should automatically cover your travel expense. Like, that's just the standard. You telling me. But see, some of these folks, this is their first time on TV. So they don't even know how to think and negotiate their contracts like that. Like, just simple stuff. Like, okay, if I get eliminated, y'all are giving me my first class plane ticket home. If y'all need me to stick around a few days and I can't be in the house, y'all are paying for my hotel stay. And it's weird because they did provide those amenities as far as getting them to the reunion. But they didn't do that for the elimination. So where is the consistency from damn Zeus? Damn, Zeus, y'all about as inconsistent as these darn on motherfuckers that darn on CSL Plasma that keep deferring my ass. Now I'm deferred for two weeks. Let's get back to them real quick. So they done deferred me for two weeks, right? And I had to take it upon myself to ask for the nurse. If I didn't ask for the nurse, oh, Lord, y'all about to hear some more traffic. It's busy. I thought it wouldn't be busy this early in the morning. But yeah, if I didn't ask for the nurse, they was gonna surprise me with that medical visit first thing in the morning. And then add insult to injury, this time I waited because every time I, I fail, they tell me wait 15 minutes and then come back and take my heart rate again. So this time I rated a half hour. And I noticed a pattern going on that people who are new but who have donated less than eight times, all of a sudden, several of us, our heart rate started went up. Now, I didn't peep this the first two times because normally when they tell me I don't qualify, I'm out the door. But some told me, well, Diva, just wait around a minute. Don't rush at 15 minutes to go get your retake. Wait a half hour. And within that half hour, I done saw all that bullshit went down. 
how they was about to disqualify somebody else, how the kiosk machines were down, how they didn't notify nobody that the kiosk machines were down. I had to request a medical. And then you know the confusion is with how they label me in the system because of me being trans. Now I will give them this. They have came a long way in regards to transgender women. They do, at least at this location, they did respect my pronouns. They called me she, her, hers. Uh, they labeled me as she. They are now legally able to do that. They just got to read the results different on the back end. Now, as far as gay men, though, once again, we still got the darn on push for legislation to prevent the discrimination from a gay man being disqualified. Because if you have sex with a man, you're still automatically barred for at least four months. And that don't make no sense. And the reason why it don't make no sense is they are doing this based off of 1983 legislation. I got to speak real loud now, all these cars coming up. But the ban is based off of a FDA regulation that was back in 1983 during a time where I was still seeing that the guy was behind me doing it that way. But this was during a time where HIV was a death sentence. Back when HIV developed into full-blown AIDS, and you would die, you would be dead within a matter of a year. Now there's medication to suppress HIV. And they screen everybody's blood for HIV regardless of your status. So if the blood is gonna be automatically tested, why is it that you are still putting gay men on a deferral that don't have relations? It don't make any sense. And even if you say, well, they might be taking medication on and off and you might not be able to get an accurate reading, you telling me that you can't modify the blood test to be able to pick up the medication such as prescrobi, such as uh, PrEP, such as PEP, in this day and age, it don't make no sense. So the legislation is very outdated. Like I said, it hasn't been updated since the 1980s. So in addition to getting on CSL ass, I'm also going to darn going to keep getting on the FDA's ass on getting that legislation changed. But we'll be back in 14 days. Y'all, I'm about tired of all this drama. I know this is why some of y'all subscribe to me. Y'all actually don't mind, you know, seeing the daily drama. I replace y'all soap operas. They don't, they don't move days of our lives over to damn Peacock. But anyways, yeah, y'all, that's about it, y'all. That's what's going on with me. Y'all wish me luck on this interview at one o'clock. I will be back and give y'all some updates on my business channel. I'll leave that in the description box below. I don't know why I didn't think to put my darn on tripod. I meant my phone holder up in here. My darn on hand just getting numb. But once again, shout out to all the darn on new subscribers hopefully y'all stick around after the darn on reviews are over for bobby i love you per i might come back for season two they said it ain't going to be a season two bullshit because it looked like darn on vh1 now why bobby is talking about he's chasing bigger and better checks bitch darn on VH1 still ain't put you back on the front screen 
for a darn gonna love hip hop Miami. So you might want to keep this darn on little shit show that you got going on over here. Cause actually it's way more entertaining. Although last night though, they did bring me to tears. And also, if any of the cast, you know, view my darn on um, stuff, let me do say, uh, you do got some folks that are balanced out here. Because I know they said, well, you know, the blogs, we only post the negative stuff, but we don't post when they doing good stuff. We don't post the makeup lines they have. We don't post nothing about the shirts. Well, once again, it's the... It's the audience. Because I did do that. And no shame, but that video only got 30 views. I highlighted Darn on Ike Sock Live. I mentioned Big Bird's music. I mentioned Darn on, and hell, I brought Darn on Go Hearts products. Y'all know I purchased the Darn on Pillow Forte. Cost me $36. And that video only got like 50 views after three weeks. But the drama, none of gave me tens of thousands of views. So sadly, it's the market. And also it's what y'all feed into because it's like y'all say in one breath that you tired of the blogs posting mostly the negative, but when y'all get on live, 90% of the time, it ain't nothing but negative. So if you want to attract positivity, you got to give what you want to be given. You can't expect for it to be a balance and you're not even given the balance for people to be balanced. It's like if you only sprinkle in the positivity and it's over a majority of negativity, by default, the blogs, and I mean, granted, the blogs are going to gravitate towards the shit anyway, the negative, but it's like you got to at least present them with a good, uh, significant amount of positive content, if that makes sense. But like I said, at least on my end, I do try to be balanced, and that's why out of all the reviews, I mean, out of the videos that I do, I don't even post all of them. Wait a minute, let me rephrase that. Out of the videos that I see them do, I don't post all of them. I rarely miss a learn on live stream. So y'all know D.B. Wine don't miss shit. Since this show been on, they have gone live with over a hundred times and y'all only seen me upload like four videos because my thing is this you don't want to niche yourself too much because this show is about to end now for people who don't have surrounded their show I mean their channels based solely off of Bobby I love you per what you going to do now that the show is over or even if you surround yourself with everything Zeus, what you gonna do when Zeus gets there? I mean, all the drama is good for right now, but if you don't diversify your content, it's like you wanna be typecast as, okay, you just go to this channel to get the drama for the day. But it ain't a, uh, that's all you work. And honey, I'd be damned if I fall in that darn on trap. So like I said, I'm going to get my shit together. And y'all want to start seeing some more positive vlogs for me. Because hell, even with my vlogs, I'm tired of darn on every time I come up on here. 
I'm always having to give y'all some bad news on what's going on in my life versus, you know, when's the last time I was able to share something positive? And I will go as far as to say, just the essence that you bring around you can affect your overall mood as well. Like, if you're absorbing too much negativity, it also trickles over into your personal life as well. So that's another reason why y'all don't see me post all the negative stuff that happens because, child, my darn own Hell, y'all wouldn't even know who Diva Wine is anymore. Because, like I said, they go live so damn often. Hell, some of them go live about like six, seven times a day. Who got that darn on time to be darn on a business in somebody else's shoes? If you put half that energy into darn on trying to do something positive for yourself, honey, you are darn on probably be halfway more successful than some of these people that you talk about. And I know damn well, Diva Wine might not be no Beyonce someday, but honey, I would definitely, hell, even now, I am in a far better position than some of these folks, and this is no shade. But it's like, how in the hell are you on a reality show and you having to beg somebody to get your darn on, uh, get you sent back home? Because you can't afford a plane ticket. How in the hell you're not able to afford your rent? And Allen Boy, you had a W-2 job. That what confuses me. Your job was a W-2. So if you got fired, where was the unemployment? If you was fired, why didn't you file for unemployment? I don't know. Maybe you just didn't know because you're still new to America. You know, he's from Jamaica, mom. So maybe he don't know that he could have filed for unemployment. Or he just wanted to be a finesse queen. And he got some free money out of Bobby. Because my thing is this. If you're in a year lease, this show only been off the air for during on a couple months. So the fact that you saying, the fact that it's out there that you facing eviction, it's like, wait a minute, they normally don't start the eviction process until you are like multiple months behind. And then depending on the state that you're in, they have to give you a court date, which is usually two weeks. And then the sheriff put the note on the door Honey, ask me how I know because I've been there, done that over damn eight years ago. That shit's normally like a 45, 50 day process. And like I said, the show only been off for like three months. I mean, as far as them no longer recording, it's only been like three months. So where is this that I'm hearing that you shacking up with Hot Wheels? Now, as far as Go Hard, I don't believe that Go Hard is homeless. They say Go Hard is struggling too. But I, just, I can't see that, honey. Because between the darn on Pelo Forte that he's selling, which the products are actually good. Y'all seen me do the, well, the 50 of y'all that <laughs> watched the damn review. Because like I said, when it comes to the positive stuff, some of y'all don't be tuning in to the positive shit. But the products are good. And hell, he gets a significant amount of cash apps and shit. I don't know, maybe he might be living above his means. Hell, we hearing that some folks have extracurricular habits or whatnot that can be very expensive. Now, they didn't say that about Go Hard. They are going to accuse Go Hard of having a house in Virginia. And you know... It's the medical shaming for me, honey. It's like, HIV is no longer a death sentence. Just like I had to tell you, and you know, it's mighty funny how all this is darn gonna tie in together, honey. 
the CSL with the discrimination with gay people based off of the stigma of HIV. And then you got gay men on a reality show perpetuating the age old stigma. Like I said, sometimes we be our own worst enemies. Hold on y'all. Child. But yeah, sometimes we be our own worst enemy. Putting HIV darn on accusations on people. And then y'all already know how I feel about the cancel. I done went through cancel the damn self. So I'm definitely giving prayers up towards Diggly. Now they saying he has six months to live. And it's like, well, shoot, is he in stage four? Is he already been diagnosed as terminal? Like, we ain't heard this out of darn on Diggling's mouth. Every time Diggling get on the damn camera, we keep hearing, eh! But anyways, prayers up to him anyways. Like I said, whew. Even when all this shit going on in my life, I'm still... I would say, thank goodness, I'm still in a fortunate enough position where I'm not dealing with some of the stuff that these folks are dealing with. Everything glitter is not gold. Because like I said, they done been on this dark old syndicated show on Zeus. And you got people allegedly about to pass away in six months on borrowed time. And you wasting your time going back and forth with people that don't mean you no good. And I'm saying from their perspective, because I, I, I don't have no issues with none of the folks. But, nigga Lane, you wasting your time instead of being around your children. You doing all this club hopping and shit versus focusing on your health, if it is true. Because once again, I haven't heard it from his mouth. But he hasn't refuted any of the darn on accusations. So I have to assume that at this point it is true. And like I said, I went through that shit my damn self. And that shit is debilitating and it's painful. And I was just in stage one, so. I watched my darn on uncle pass away though from darn on stage three colon cancer. And I don't even know what particular type of cancer that Diggling might have. But hopefully, you know, they're able, because there's been some cases, like even my next door neighbor, she was in stage four. She had stage four, um, I wanna say uvarian cancer. I mean, ovarian cancer. And she was given six months to live. And 15 years later, she is still here. And she's now in remission, so. Just because they say that you might be only got six months, depending on how you change your life and stuff around, you know, that might be, might be the thing to save you. But yeah, as far as racing your time on this bullshit, don't make not nail bit of sense to me. Folks talk about they have $27 an hour jobs. And they have a darn on depend on somebody for their rent payment. Really? And then what really got me was the most unproblematic people of the show got attacked last night. I seen tracks and I y'all know I recorded the footage. I might reach out to see if I, you know, cause like I said, I don't want to become the girl that gets on everybody's nerves by reposting all the live streams that they end up blocking me or whatnot. I do want to be courteous of people's feelings, but at the same time, it's like, y'all are public figures now in a sense. And if y'all are going back and forth on a live, 
And I think it could be an educational moment to present to y'all as the audience. Cause y'all know, I like the darn on balance it out. Amongst all the folks who just, you know, post the stuff just for the views or whatnot. So it really upset me. When I tell y'all I cried, I'm not, I'm not joking. I literally cried. Cause Trax had a two hour interview. I mean, uh, uh, he did a radio interview last night from seven to nine. I got to see the first hour of it from Instagram. I don't know why Instagram still has that um, time limit where you can only be live for an hour. That don't make no sense. Yeah, that don't make no sense to me. But he was live for two hours. And y'all know Trax, we know him from G Status. We know him from Chasing Atlanta. We know him from Wheel of Fortune and all these other platforms. He has an established singing career. Big Bird just got honored in his town of Portland, Oregon. He's the first gay man to uh, do such a large event in, in the city of Oregon, Portland. I mean, in the state of Oregon. 20,000, a 20,000 plus crowd. Child, you low key got celebrities that can't even are gonna fill up 20,000. Do y'all not know 20,000 is equivalent to Madison Square Garden? And who was the other one? You got Crush. Who done a did all sets, um, makeup and hair, I believe. You know guy makeup as far as just a light face, no makeup, makeup look in the hair or whatnot. And then he got his lip gloss that he's about to, um, which I'm definitely going to try out. And it's like, you don't see none of these folks. Oh, Lord, who keep calling me? God damn. Once again, CSL Plasma. This is y'all damn fault. Couldn't even get my damn donation amount for the day to get these damn creditors off my back. But yeah, some of the most unproblematic people on the show done got attacked by last night by Allen Boy simply because they was on the darn on, um, on the live stream with Bobby. Now my thing is this, I can't see both sides of that. I can see where Allen Boy is coming from. It's like, wait a minute now. I understand that we was all on this show for the love of Bobby. And just because I'm on the outs with Bobby and whatnot, y'all don't have to be. However, it seemed like some of y'all was sitting up there. And once again, I ain't saying these folks particularly. But I can see from Allen Boy's perspective that it's like, well, it's one thing for y'all to still be cool with Bobby, but if he's up on a live talking cold cash shit about me, and y'all supposed to be my bros, why in the fuck is y'all up here giggling with this motherfucking bitch? And now from their perspective, they like, hey, we cool with everybody, and you know we just not getting in it. But, see now here's where I personally stand and this is where I sit up. And I think Go Hard was trying to convey this as well when he said, you know, if it was me, I would have just got up off the line. But it was the delivery of it all because you know, they under the influence. Your tone, if your tone is not correct, people's not gonna receive it. So what Go Hard said wasn't disrespectful. But the dismissive tone in which he presented it made it fall on deaf ears. Because, yeah, it's like, if the live stream ain't nothing but talking shit about somebody else that I'm cool with, I'm not going to engage with that. Now, as far as Rail being on the live, that's understandable. Because Rail can't, um, can't stand Allen Boy nor Go Hard. So it's understandable for him to be on the live. 
But as far as like Crush and who else was up there? Big Bird. Now, I don't know how Trax once again got brought in the mix because I don't even think Trax got up on the live stream. I don't know. He might have. But I don't recall. I got to see that. I got to go back and watch that footage. I don't recall Trax being on the live stream with Bobby. Was he on the live with Bobby? But even if he was, y'all, it's like... Second thought, oh, it's so many nuances to that. Cause I, 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 I'm more so with Go Hard. I, I couldn't personally be on the live stream with somebody talking cold cash shit. It ain't no balance or nothing. Like we ain't gonna eventually get off the subject and talk about something else. But once again, you the company that you keep. This is what the whole show was brought up about. It really wasn't about for the love of Bobby. It was more so just for clicks and views. And when you have bloggers, you know, also profitizing off the clicks and views, hell, you can't necessarily blame them because it's the doggone environment that you set up. So, yeah, it's a matter of was they complicit? And I think there was some level of complicity amongst several of the cast members. Now, it all boils down to underlining the tent. Was they complicit in what Bobby and um, Bobby Spring was saying? Yes, they was. There was some complicity, some complicity there. There wasn't no standing up for the other person because they thought they was doing the right thing by staying out of it. But my thing is this. When you up there and you allowing somebody to do that, even if it's somebody that you wanted to love, it's like right is right, wrong is wrong. It's like, yeah, y'all do got to take the L for that. But see, now, Island Boy, this is where you fucked up. If you were still cool enough with them, why didn't you call them on the phone? Now, they see, this is what pisses me off with you. Because you and Go Hard was essentially right. With Trax, with Big Burr, and Crush Darn on being complicit in Bobby's bullshit. They was most certainly complicit. Now, was it intentional? I don't believe it was intentional. I don't believe it was malicious. It was just complicity. And you could have articulated that number one sober because it would have came from a more heartfelt place being sober versus being pissy drunk and irate. Now that you done came at the folks disrespectfully, now you done lost friendships. You done lost friendships with folks all behind some bullshit darn going uh, for the love of damn Bobby. You done let a man come between brotherhood, a man that really in the end ain't mean all y'all no bit of good. Because Bobby, and y'all know I love, I used to love me some Bobby. Y'all know, if y'all go back to my previous videos, I used to say, Bobby! Bobby, I love you! But honey, when somebody shows you who they are, believe them. If somebody shows you that they have certain habits and you don't get down with that, believe them. And that's one thing I wouldn't have been able to do, honey. Y'all know I grew up with crackheads. Hell, I, I still live with a crackhead, so... I couldn't never see myself romantically involved with a crackhead. And for people who was arguing with me in the comment section talking about, oh, there's a difference. Bitch, the difference is equivalent to water versus ice. It's the same chemical composition. Just because your darn old uh, powder is more uh, pure don't make you no more better than the crackhead, honey. Just because you wearing darn on $10,000 fur as you darn on uh, smoke, uh, smoke up your nose, don't make you no better than the bitch who darn on hit it with the spoon. Bitch, y'all both got problems, and you both need to go to rehab for your disease. And Allen boy, talking about you did it one time. 
Well, bitch, peer pressure much? If that's not your get down. So you trying to darn on say that you was the bobby. Ain't that's about some shit. Did y'all peep that shit when uh, he was darn on talking about bobby smoke coke? I mean, well, yeah, do, do cocaine. And Bobby retorted that you did it with me. And then Allen Boyd retorted that, oh, he did it one time. It's like, well, bitch, if that's not your get down, why would you let somebody convince you to do something like that? So, ironically, you trying to say that you was the Bobby Brown of the situation. And that darn on Whitney, a.k.a. Bobby Lights, was the one that turned you on. Really, bitch? It was a lot of finessing going on on all sides, honey. At the end of the day, Bobby was trying to be a darn on sugar mama on the low. For a nice dark skinned piece of trade, which what Island Boy is. You was digmatized. The final two ended up being the most problematic of the house. Your ex that cheated on you and your and the tall, dark, and handsome that cheated on you while he was in the house uh, competing. But you were so digmatized by the height, by the muscle, by the dick, and you let go people who had all the good qualities. You let go of the tracks. Now, no shame, no tea. Big Bird was unrealistic. Big Bird got a good heart and whatnot. But it's like, now, Big Bird, you know you thicker than a Snickers, baby. Now, we know damn well that wasn't going to work out. We, we do got to be realistic. If, if somebody doesn't see it for you in regards to you not as physical as them, that is, and it's a respectful way of doing it. I didn't like that bullshit that they did with having Big Bird keep going up and down the fucking stairs. And now I'm going to ridicule him. Talking about, well, bitch, you can't even get up and do a push-up for me. What the hell you do? He was darn on bigger than the darn on um, beanbag when you darn on inviting him to the house. What makes you think he was going to be athletic all of a sudden out the blue? See, that's that bullshit. Pretty much darn on Big work Bird was an affirmative action hire. Y'all darn on put him on the diversify the cast so y'all would pretty much say that you didn't have a whole bunch of fuck boys with darn on abs and big dicks on the darn on um, thing. You had some folks that were short. You had some folks that were very feminine like Miss Mamas. You had some in-betweens like Crush and Real Savage. Then you had the soft trade like uh like tracks or whatnot. And then you had the show enough trade like darn on Island Boy and darn on rerun. But yeah, y'all, those are my thoughts. Just a darn on hot mess. So, the day is what? Thursday? We got Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We got three days till the reunion comes on. And my final message before I leave up out of here is, hopefully, these folks get it together. They don't let this darn on little show darn on come between you know, valued friendships. Y'all done built the brotherhood. And y'all shouldn't let this darn on little show. Because, hell, y'all didn't get paid enough for this damn shit. From what I'm hearing, some of y'all only got paid $4,000. $4,000. And I think for the reunion, they might have gave some of y'all some bonuses. Now, some folks got more money from the gecko, like Grandy Glaze, Rerun, and whatnot. But nobody got paid no more than like fifteen thousand for the whole season, and it's like it's fifteen thousand dollars worth your sanity. It's fifteen thousand dollars worth losing precious time with loved ones, especially if you're dying. Hey, baby. Y'all say hey to the audience. No. 
Uh -uh, y'all just ate an hour ago. Y'all see how big they done got, y'all? They like four months now. But anyways, let me get in the house. But yeah, hopefully they change their life around. They focus on actually getting to the bag in a more productive way. Uh, Y'all ain't coming up in here. Uh, move. 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 Whew. But yeah, y'all. Like I said, hopefully, if they put half this much energy after this show ends, into you know focusing on their businesses for the ones that got businesses for the ones who don't it's never too late go ahead and start something some folks start later in life hell samuel L. jackson didn't get put on till he was 40 years old to roger p henson didn't get her big break till she was like in her 30s um viola davis just became famous real heavy after 15 years and she's been doing this for over 30 some years so don't think because you're older because some of these folks are in their mid-30s that it's not too late to change your life around. Because I know some of these folks are like 35, 36, 37. Never too late to get out the bullshit and change your way, you know, change your life to a better standard of living. And when you do better, you become better. When you focus on redirecting the negativity into positivity, goodness will come upon you. And that is my closing remarks. Uh, as far as the CSL drama, uh, I would keep y'all abreast of that situation. So let me go ahead and get ready for my interview at 1 o'clock. Feel free to like, comment, share, subscribe. Once again, shout out to all the new subscribers. Hopefully y'all stick around once all this darn on drama with the cast subsides.